This video is about a space probe that traveled far beyond our solar system. It successfully escaped the heliopause, the boundary of the heliosphere which is the spherical region around the sun. It is filled with solar magnetic fields and solar wind that consists of protons and electrons. And escaping this strong magnetic field is not easy. No mission like this one has been conducted until this very present day. The distance between our Earth and Neptune is approximately 4.3 billion kilometers. This space probe has completed the journey of more than 161 astronomical units. That's somewhat around 24 billion kilometers in space. NASA's Voyager spacecraft are among the miracles of science and astronomy. While everyone's attention is on the James Webb Space Telescope right now, two of the oldest space probes and the most remote human-made object from Earth are continuously conducting research. There are two major questions that really made me curious when I heard about the Voyager space program. If NASA was able to develop a technology in the 1970s that could travel to such great extents in space, then why don't they send more such space probes today when the technology is way ahead of what it was in the 1970s? If Voyager space probes travel for billions of kilometers, then how were they able to match the fuel requirement? How did they get the electricity required to operate the mechanisms installed on the space probe? Let's find out. But before understanding the answer to these two questions, we really need to understand the background of the Voyager space program. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were both launched in 1977. Strangely, Voyager 2 was launched first on August 20, followed by Voyager 1 on September 5. These spacecrafts were equipped with advanced scientific instruments to study the outer planets, their moons and the interstellar medium. Over the years, they provided invaluable data about these distant worlds, including detailed images and important scientific discoveries. Perhaps one of the most remarkable achievements of the Voyager program was the famous pale blue dot photograph taken by Voyager 1 in 1990. In this image, Earth appears as a tiny pale blue dot in the vastness of space. Space. Voyager 1 became the most distant space probe on 17 February 1998 after surpassing the Pioneer 10 as the most distant spacecraft from the Sun. Whereas on the other hand, Voyager 2 was moving slower than the Voyager 1 even if it was launched before Voyager 1. The speed of Voyager 1 now is approximately 60,000 km per hour and the speed of Voyager 2 is now 55,000 km per hour. To give you a clear picture, speed of a bullet fired from M82, one of the fastest firing gun, is 3,348 km per hour. So imagine the speed of these space probes currently traveling in the interstellar space. Yes, you heard it right. Voyagers are currently traveling in interstellar space. Voyager 1 crossed into interstellar space on August 25, 2012. This historic achievement made Voyager 1 the first human-made spacecraft to enter the space between stars beyond our solar system. Voyager 1's entry into interstellar space was officially confirmed by NASA in September 2013. But wait! What is interstellar space? Interstellar space is the vast empty space between stars in the universe. It's the region where there are no planets, moons or other celestial objects and mostly a vacuum. Now you may say, Shaz, I understand all the important details about Voyager 1. But why did they launch it on the first place? So the primary objectives of the Voyager 1 were study Jupiter, explore Saturn, discover Uranus and Neptune, measure cosmic rays, monitor solar wind, study interstellar space, send messages, carry a message from Earth to potential extraterrestrial beings in case it's ever found by someone or something out there. It was interesting that NASA scientists actually sent a message with Voyager 1 on a golden color plate. So now, let's jump back on the two major questions that I stated in the beginning of this video. The first one is, if NASA was able to develop a technology in the 1970s that could travel to such great extents in space, then why don't they send more such space probes today when the technology is way ahead of what it was in the 1970s? There is no spacecraft designed till date that can deliberately achieve the speed mark of more than 50,000 km per hour in a few hours after launch. Even if you are able to achieve the greater speed that is required, the fuel consumption will be massive. 
then how did the voyager spacecraft do it how did they reach the interstellar space the answer is its trajectory nasa scientists found that there will be a unique alignment of planets in 1978 now this type of alignment only occurs once in every 176 years that means after 1978 it will occur in the year 2154 Basically this alignment helps Voyager space probes take advantage of planet's gravity and use it as a slingshot to get further. It is estimated that Voyager 1 will be of no use when its RTGs stop working in 2025. And here comes our second question. How did they get the electricity required to operate the mechanisms installed in the space probe? As we all know There is no solar electric generator working in interstellar space as sun rays never reach there. Voyager 1 is equipped with radio isotope thermoelectric generators which provide electricity to important instruments fitted to the spacecraft. Let me explain it in a simple way. In 1821, a German scientist found a strange fact about physics. Metals and some substances can carry both heat and electricity well. Thomas Seebeck discovered that a small electrical charge was made when he put two of these materials together and heated one end while freezing the other end actually electrons move from the hot side the heat source to the cool side the other edge we now call this process of producing electricity the seebeck effect A single unit of such a mechanism is known as a thermocouple. Now many thermocouples are combined and form a shape that can hold heat from one side and cold from the other. The greater the difference in the temperature between the hot and cold sides, the greater the amount of power that can be generated. NASA used plutonium 238, an element that when naturally decayed produces heat to generate heat from the inside of the RTG unit. And as we all know the temperature in space reaches up to minus 270.45 degrees celsius that gives RTGs an advantage in accessing the cold temperature of the space and this is how the electricity is produced in the voyager space probes to operate the important scientific instruments i hope you understood the video and got answers to the questions asked at the beginning of this video if you have any more questions you may ask them in the comment section like this video and subscribe with those for content that makes you smart. Harder.